Hello and welcome to Agivata Reviews. Today we will be taking a look at a comparison between two elephant-sized minivans. These are the 2014 Toyota Alphard and the 2014 Nissan El Grand. They are both Japanese minivans that offer high levels of practicality, refinement and also some luxury. In terms of minivans, the Alphard sits at the top of Toyota's hierarchy. Then just below it is the Toyota Estima, then the Noah and Voxy. On the other hand, in Nissan's hierarchy, the El Grand also sits at the top, then just below it is the Nissan Serena. We are going to take an in-depth comparison between these two giant minivans to find out which one you should go for, so please stay tuned. Before we start this video, please consider subscribing to the channel if you find this content helpful. You can also use the details in the description box to support the production of this content by donating. Lastly, if you have a car that's up for sale, and you would like to advertise it on the channel, feel free to reach me via email or WhatsApp. So these two minivans have been around for a long time. This 2014 Alpha is the second generation that was in production from 2008 to 2015, while the 2014 El Grand is the third generation that was in production from 2010 till present. In terms of the price, you can get a 2014 Alpha from around 2 million to around 3 million shillings depending on the trim level condition and mileage. 2015 models and onwards are more expensive at 12 over 3 million, again depending on the features and mileage. The 2014 Nissan El Grand is a bit more affordable, with between 1.7 to around 2.5 million you can get yourself one. 2015 models and onwards are more expensive at over 2 million shillings. Moving on to the insurance cost, the third party is 7,000 shillings per annum for each minivan, while for the comprehensive insurance, I got back four different quotations from different insurance companies. For the Alpha, the highest was 96,000 shillings per annum, while the lowest was 78,000 shillings per annum. There was also a quotation of around 88,000 shillings and 91,000 shillings per annum. As for the Nissan El Grand, I also got back four offers, with the highest being 92,000 shillings and the lowest being 72,000 shillings. There was also a quotation of 75,000 shillings and 80,000 shillings per annum quotation. This is just to give you an idea of the premium you may be expected to pay for the 2014 models. So here we also see that the El Grand is slightly more affordable to insure compared to the Alphard. Let's have a look at the engine options. You get three in the Alphard, a 2.4 liter four cylinder naturally aspirated petrol, the other one is a 2.4 liter hybrid and lastly a more powerful 3.5 liter V6. This van is available either as a front wheel drive or an all wheel drive. Now the 3.5 liter engine is coupled to a 6 speed torque converter automatic which is quite good. That variant feels very responsive and powerful. The 2.4 liter is coupled to a CVT transmission and as expected this variant feels sluggish especially if there are passengers on board. Lastly, the 2.4 liter hybrid is coupled to an eCVT. This variant feels a bit more powerful than the 2.4 liter due to the electric motor that adds a bit more oomph. The Nissan El Grand, on the other hand, has two engine options a 2.5 liter four cylinder or a 3.5 liter V6. It's also available in either front or all wheel drive. The only transmission option on offer is an Xtronic CVT with seven preset gear ratios. To make you feel like there are actual gears but in essence there are no gears it's just a cvt that is aimed at very smooth and linear power delivery with the alpha you have options if maybe you don't want the cvt you can get the 3.5 liter with the proper six speed automatic but in the l grand you have no options you must stick with the cvt expect around 11 kilometers per liter in the alpha's 2.4 liter engine this engine is more fuel efficient than the 3.5 liter V6 but it is sluggish and you will definitely feel the need for more power when you are going up an incline with 7 passengers on board. As with most underpowered cars, you may get even worse efficiency figures because you will now try to get more power to go uphill or overtake by being hard on the accelerator. The 2.4 liter hybrid can achieve around 18 km per liter which is very impressive considering the size of this van. In terms of power, it's better than the 2.4 liter and it's, it's also very fuel efficient. 
so it strikes a very good balance between power and fuel efficiency. Lastly, the 3.5 liter V6 is a powerhouse that will dent your pocket in terms of fuel consumption. Expect around 9 km per liter depending on how you drive. In fact, if you are not careful, it can go down up to around 6.5 km per liter. So it's not full efficient, but you will definitely enjoy the power on offer. The Alphard has a 65 liter fuel tank, while the El Grand has a larger 73 liter tank. Moving on to the service costs, these minivans are equally matched. It will cost about 11,000 shillings on average to service each van for the minor service after every 5,000 kilometers. As for the major service, it will cost about 20,000 shillings again on average to service each van after 10,000 kilometers. Note however that the 3.5 liter V6 variants may cost slightly more. Also if you use synthetic oil you may spend more money but the service intervals will now be longer. So instead of servicing after 5,000 kilometers you will now service it between 8 to 10,000 kilometers. That's for the minor service while for the major service you will now service after 15,000 kilometers. What about ground clearance? Both of these minivans fall slightly below the recommended clearance of about 165 mm. The Alphard has a clearance of 157 mm with the stock rims while the El Grand has a clearance of 150 mm with the stock rims. The El Grand sits lower to the ground and this explains why it handles slightly better than the taller Alphard. It may be necessary to modify the ground clearance or you can just install slightly larger aftermarket wheels but do note that the larger the wheels the more the handling of the vehicle will be interfered with if you just wish to maintain the stock wheels then you may have to watch out for severe bumps the carb weight of the alpha ranges between 1905 kgs to 2070 kgs the hybrid variants with the all-wheel drive are heavier compared to the 2.4 liter front wheel drive the El Grand's carb weight is around 1,935 kilograms. So these are not light vehicles by any means. And that's also part of the reason why they get these brakes all around to enable them come to a complete stop much faster. Let's quickly take a fun fact break, then we will resume and look at some of the extra features you can get in these minivans. Welcome back. So these being luxury minivans, they can come with lots of creature comfort features such as a sunroof, a roof mounted monitor to keep the passengers at the back entertained, power sliding rear doors, captain seats in the second row, electric leather seats, power tailgate, 360 degrees camera, cruise control and wood finish. So they are well equipped, especially the top of the range variants. Now let's have a look at the exterior and interior designs. As they say, beauty lies in the eyes of the key holder. Which one do you think looks better? Let me know in the comment section. I think based on looks alone, the Alphard has an edge. It tends to look a bit more elegant and expensive. In terms of size, they both look quite big, but the El Grand is slightly longer and wider than the Alphard. The Alphard is taller and this results in more headroom in the interior. But the downside is that there is more body roll than in the shorter El Grand, which has a lower center of gravity. Moving on into the interior, these minivans are both very spacious and supremely comfortable. Their dashboard designs are almost similar. They both have the gear selector on the dashboard. They also have the infotainment screens in between the AC vents. Then down below you get the AC controls. The overall look is quite simple and straightforward with everything located where you would expect. The front seats get plenty of adjustments and are very comfortable. The steering wheel can also be adjusted for rack and reach. So it's quite easy to get a comfortable driving position. At the second row, the base models come with bench seats, but on the other variants you get captain seats that have leg rests and are absolutely comfortable. The seats in the El Grand are a bit more wider and comfortable than in the Alphard. You also get cup holders as well as AC vents to keep the passengers at the back cool. 
The last row of the seats are bench seats that can accommodate three passengers in both minivans. They are also comfortable, albeit not as the second row of seats. There is plenty of head and legroom, but if that's not enough, then the two captain seats in the second row can slide forward to create even more legroom. Lastly, with the third row of seats up, there is still reasonable space to carry around two suitcases and a few other smaller items. But if you need more space, then you can fold down the third row of seats in the L Grand to create a very large loading space. In the Alphard, the seats do not fold down, they instead have to be folded up and hung by the side of the rear windows. This eats up some storage space and hence it's not as spacious as the El Grand. Overall, they are both very comfortable and spacious. You really won't have much to complain about. In terms of their driving dynamics, both offer very comfortable rides. Their suspensions really do a good job of ironing out most, if not all, of the road undulations to give a pleasant and soft ride. As you would expect, there will definitely be some body roll because of how tall these minivans are, especially the Alpha. High speed stability is also pretty good. There is no point in time you will feel some wobble due to high speed in any of these minivans. So there you have it. Which one between these two should you go for? It's definitely a tough choice because they are almost equally matched in most categories such as practicality, comfort, engine options and fuel consumption, except that the El Grand does not have a hybrid option. In terms of reliability, they are both very reliable. I have personally not heard of any prevalent issues of CVT failure in the Nissan El Grand though I would still doubt it considering that Nissan CVTs have not had a very good reputation for reliability, especially when it comes to long distance drives, whereby these CVTs overheat and fail due to an inadequate cooling system. That fear of the CVT failure may be one of the reasons why most people prefer the Alphard. Another reason may be the resale value. Being a Toyota, the resale value in the Alpha is definitely better than in the El Grand, so that may also be another reason why most people prefer the Alpha. Lastly, the lack of a hybrid option for the El Grand may also lure more people to the Alpha, especially those that are keen on fuel efficiency. These are the three main reasons why most people prefer the more expensive Alpha. But if you are not into hybrids and don't mind about resale value, then you can just go for the El Grand. If you want better fuel consumption, get the 2.5 liter, but if you want more power, get the 3.5 liter V6. Note, however, that the El Grand may not age so well. With the time, you may start noticing rattles and squeaks. The Alpha, on the other hand, is slightly better. Most of them age quite well, which is a sign of proper build quality. My recommendation is the Alpha with the 3.5 liter V6. It's powerful and very responsive, especially due to that 6-speed automatic transmission. If you are keen on fuel efficiency, then get the hybrid. It strikes a very good balance between power and fuel consumption. But if you are not into hybrids, then just get the 2.4 liter. But do note that it may feel underpowered with passengers and cargo on board. So there you have it. Let me know which one you will go for. Thank you for watching. If you have any inquiries, reach me via email or WhatsApp. That's it for this episode. See you in the next video.